But my 2D primitives are, in essence, we already talked about this, doesn't change from the first one. I'm going to do a P line that has the shape of this whole object on the bottom, my bottom outline. Now, keep in mind that that P line, when I extrude it up, it stops here, and then it changes. Right? At this point, I've only got this point that goes up. So I'm going to need really two two-dimensional shapes, and act, actually three. Because you want to do positive and negatives here. And that's kind of why I put this note here. Positive and negatives. Now I can make a P line <coughs> that has that shape, right? I'm going to take that shape and I'm going to extrude it up this high. That's going to create this whole base. Now I need to have another P line. And let me just draw it off to the side. I need to have another P line that has just that shape. Oh, yeah, just that shape. Because that one has to be extruded from the bottom all the way to the top. And then I'm going to union those two together, and I'm now going to be sitting like this. Okay. Now I need a negative. That one. And that's all. I'm going to build all of these on that bottom zero plane, extrude them up different heights, union, subtract. Then you're going to make your solid. Now, if your datum was around a circular center, would I be using extrude? No, I'd be using revolve, but I have the exact same process. Okay. If I go three dimensional, sweet. <coughs> If it's a real complicated shape that changes over an axis, I use loft. Still, I've got these exact same steps. So we're going to make the solid. Here's what I'm bringing on solid. You might want to add. This is extrude, revolve, sweep, loft. Then we're going to use our booleans, however they are. If I have an object that has one common datum like this guy, it's union. I, it's going to be union with extrude every time. If you have about a center, it's revolve every single time. Okay. If I have <coughs> two or three datums, I'm probably looking at intersect. Remember, we just did that intersect problem? That thing had three different datums on it. That's why I used three views. <laughs> if I had a two view drawing, I'm probably doing intersect with two views. That's why those datums are going to tell you how to make this thing. Once I do that, then I come back and edit. This object's not going to require any editing. By editing, I mean I'm tapering bases, I'm filleting, I'm chamfering, I'm doing these types of things. Pretty straightforward? That outline took us 12 minutes. Why don't you folks go to drawing? I'll give you 10 minutes. Let's see how many of you can finish this object in 10 minutes and completely draw. I'll bet you quite a few of you. If you don't, no biggie. But you just did your outline. You know how you're going to go about doing it. Go ahead and build it. I'll stop you in 10 minutes.
Four more minutes. Stop you in about 30 seconds.
you would just stop where you're at and give me your attention. How many people didn't get it done? Can I see a show of hands? Okay. Missy, how much more time do you need to think you finish it? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Sean? Um, two or three. Okay, two or three. Lisa? Half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Cheryl? Two or three. Two or three. Amy, did you have your hand up? Um, yeah, I'm like, uh, probably like 15 minutes. Okay, 15. All right. Those of you that finished, what allowed you to get it done that quickly? Having a plan. Yeah. Isn't that wasn't wasn't that it? Knowing how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing Identify. how we were going to go, and then the rest of the drawing mode kicks in because you got a plan, and then the things that need to come where we're not thinking about them is oh, flip it to the front view, go to it and do that. I know I need P lines, and I draw that. And then I'm going to use extrude. Having that plan allowed you to do it. I, I think I saw some of you quit drawing around four to five minutes. I think I, I, when I drew it mine up here, I think that's three to four, somewhere right in that range. And it was because of that plan. I knew every step I was doing before I ever touched a thing on my keyboard. And now I've got an accurate result. So, those of you that say you need another 15 minutes, I would disagree with you. Or another 10 minutes, whatever you said. I would disagree with you. But, you got to, and this comes with practice. I'm not, I'm not saying speed is something you need to have. It's not. You need to be accurate first. That has not changed from anything from day one. Accuracy is always first. Speed comes later. Okay. Let me just switch this top view. You needed these three shapes, all drawn on the same plane. And in essence, so you drew the top view in its entirety as it would project. Then you just made different P lines of the different shapes. Then you might want to copy right on top of themselves, things of that nature. In essence, what you wanted to get to, let me just do some moves here. I'm going to move this guy. That goes to this center. Okay, just so you can kind of see where these all sit. Okay, and then they just sit all on top of each other. Now, to you draw to draw that shape, I would bet all of you could draw this off of information out of the text in three or four minutes. Now, at this point. You know, you need this shape twice, right? So you just copy these shapes on top of themselves and then make the P lines that are appropriate because you have to get those closed shapes. Then you're just doing extrude. And this will be a variety of ways, but on mine, what I did is I extruded these two.